Okay, so welcome back to this next video in which we're discussing cell adhesion molecules. Okay, so we've uh, talked about the four main families of cell adhesion molecules. The immunoglobulin superfamily cell adhesion molecules, the integrins, the selectins, and the cadherins. And most cell adhesion molecules will fit into one of these four families. Not all of them, however. There are exceptions which don't fit into any of these four families, uh, but most of them do. Okay, so we're going to spend the rest of this video looking at uh, the immunoglobulin superfamily cell adhesion molecules. Okay, so uh, there are three examples of immunoglobulin uh, superfamily cell adhesion molecules which uh, are very, very important in immunology and also in uh, cardiovascular physiology. Okay, but before we just discuss that, let's discuss the structure of the um, immunoglobulin superfamily cell adhesion molecules in a little bit more detail. And it's not going to be in that much more detail. We're just going to refine our structure slightly from this box. Okay, so the transmembrane region in all of these immunoglobulin superfamily cell adhesion molecules is just a single membrane spanning alpha helix. Okay, so a single alpha helix of the polypeptide spans the membrane and then on the uh, inside we'll have an intracellular domain and on the outside we'll have an extracellular domain. So that's all we're going to refine our structure to, so not too complicated. So here's the extracellular domain and here's the intracellular domain. Right, okay, so now let's look at some important examples of these uh, immunoglobulin superfamily cell adhesion molecules. So the first one we will start off with is a cell adhesion molecule known as ICAM1. Now this is very important in immunology, and it stands for Intercellular Adhesion Molecule 1. Okay, so Intercellular Adhesion Molecule 1. Now, the role of the intercellular adhesion molecule 1 is that it's going to be expressed on the apical membrane of endothelial cells uh, when uh, the tissue which that endothelial cell is within uh, becomes inflamed, basically, or infected, which is going to drive the inflammatory response. Okay, so as part of the inflammatory response, the endothelial cell cells of that um, of the blood vessels in that tissue, specifically the capillaries and the post-capillary venules, are going to start expressing this ICAM1. So here is our endothelial cell, here is its nucleus, okay, and it's going to put on its surface the ICAM1. So I'll draw the ICAM1 and I'm demoting its structure now back to a box just to make it nice and simple. Now, what's the purpose of putting ICAM1 on your surface? Well, basically, it's going to bind to uh, another cell adhesion molecule that is um, on uh, monocytes, okay? So a monocyte is a type of white blood cell that is within the blood, okay? Now, when you move monocytes out of the blood and into the interstitial fluid, they differentiate into macrophages. So monocytes are the precursors to macrophages, and macrophages are a phagocyte which will uh, engulf uh, invading pathogens and di digest them, basically. Okay, so if we've got some invading pathogen in our tissue, then uh, the endothelial cells will be activated and they will express this ICAM1 on their surface here, okay? And basically what's going to happen is that ICAM1 is going to bind to a, um, other, another cell adhesion molecule that is always expressed on monocytes. So the change has happened on the level of the endothelial cells. Usually in a calm piece of tissue, the endothelial cells will not express ICAM1, and therefore the monocytes will not bind to the endothelial cells. But if the tissue becomes inflamed, or, well, infected and then inflamed, then the endothelial cells will be activated to express ICAM1, and this is going to bind to a certain cell adhesion molecule that's always expressed on our monocytes. Now, what is this cell adhesion molecule that's always expressed on our monocytes? Well, it's a, um, it's a member of the integrin family. So I told you we'd meet examples of the integrin family. And it's known as LEFA1, LFA1. 
1, and this stands for Lymphocyte Function Associated Antigen 1. Now, where am I going to be able to fit this in? I'll have to put it down here. So it stands for Lymphocyte, that's the L, and then Function, I don't think I'll try and fit that in there, Function is the F, and then Associated is missed out, so no letter gets the associated, even though it looks as though it maybe does, uh, that A at the end stands for instead antigen. So the F really stands for function and then associated, so function associated, and the A on the end stands for antigen. So it's the lymphocyte function associated antigen 1, and this is on the surface of monocytes. Okay, so here is LIFA1, or lymphocyte function associated antigen 1, in turquoise. So, when the tissue becomes infected, the endothelial cells will be activated, they will express intercellular adhesion molecule 1 on their surface, and this will mean that monocytes, which have this lymphocyte function associated antigen 1, will stick to those endothelial cells, and this will promote uh, the uh, monocyte then to be um, moved across the endothelium via diapodesis into the interstitial space and there uh, it will differentiate into a macrophage and that macrophage will then go phagocytose the pathogen and that should hopefully help to um, clear the pathogenic infection. Okay, so that's our first example of a uh, immunoglobulin superfamily cell adhesion molecule. The next uh, famous example Again, very famous example in immunology is VCAM1, okay, which stands for Vascular Cell Adhesion Molecule 1. Okay, now this has pretty much the same function as ICAM1. Again, activated endothelial cells will put Vascular Cell Adhesion Molecule 1 on their surface and it will bind to a um, integrin uh, protein that's on the surface of the monocytes. That's a different integrin protein to the one that ICAM1 binds to. Okay, so here is our endothelial cell, but the principle is the same. So our endothelial cell undergoes activation when the pathogenic infection begins, and then is going to put on its surface this vascular cell adhesion molecule 1. So this is VCAM1. 1, okay, and this will bind to an integrin that is now on the surface of the monocyte, okay, and the integrin it binds to is known as VLA4, okay, which stands for very late antigen 4, okay, so this is very late antigen 4, and I think I'll colour um, very late antigen 4 in orange. Okay, so this is very late antigen 4. Okay, so here we'll colour it in orange. Okay, and then we'll colour in VCAM1 in what colour should we go for? Pink. Okay, so when uh, the uh, pathogen uh, arrives in the tissue, the endothelial cells will be activated, they'll express VCAM1 on their surface, it will bind to the very late antigen 4 on the surface of the monocytes, and this will uh, promote the um, monocytes from mo moving across the endothelium via diapodesis, and then into the interstitial fluid, where they will differentiate into macrophages, and those macrophages will then go and engulf uh, the pathogen which is infecting the tissue. Okay, so the final example, and there are more obviously than just these uh, ones that I've shown you so far, uh, is a, another protein uh, which is known as platelet endothelial cell adhesion molecule 1, which I'll show you what it does in a moment. But let me firstly stress something. These interactions that we've had here, we've had ICAM1 interacting with LIFA1 and VCAM1 interacting with VLA4, these have both been heterophilic binding. So the cell adhesion molecule has bound to another cell adhesion molecule. However, uh, these two cell adhesion molecules are not the same cell adhesion molecule. They're not even in the same family, okay? So you've got an immunoglobulin superfamily uh, cell adhesion molecule binding to an integrin family cell adhesion molecule in both cases here. The next example we're going to see, PCAM, a platelet endothelial cell adhesion molecule 1.
okay? Uh, this is going to, um, this is going to um, be an example of homophilic binding, okay?